Welcome, everyone. Welcome back to another Massachusetts Central Radio Show. I'm your humble host, Mike Kumo. Um, here for a um, here for a midnight. Um, here a um, here a here a um, late night midnight um, twilight episode. It's about I don't know 11:55 lost what time it is but uh so so today folks happens to be the um uh it happens to be uh april 1st i started this video i started this video april 1st but it's gonna obviously cross in in five minutes gonna it's gonna cross into um april 2nd but uh today 15 years ago on April first, two thousand six. I think this was a this was a day after my confirmation back in two thousand six. So, just let me give you a little backstory. Um, I was I was uh, I was doing my I did my holy confirmation um, the day before, but uh, um, I became one of God's warriors and. Um, and uh, I would now, I would now fully be, uh, um, basically a man in the eyes of the church, and, um, and a fellow adult male in the eyes of the church. And I would face many, many challenges. You guys know I faced many in my, in my lifetime, in the 15 years since that day. I in the in the fifteen sixteen years since in the sixteen in the yeah in the fifteen years since that day, um, I've done many. But um, my first challenge outright was my grandmother passing. Uh, so today on April first, two thousand six, about fifteen years ago, um, my grandmother, my dad's mom, uh, passed away. Um, certain circumstances um i think it was liver or pancreas i think i think it was i think it might have been either liver or something like that my grandfather died of heart um heart trouble he always had heart trouble because he had a pacemaker and everything but he was october um he was early october 2015 which was um which near and makes no difference was about six years ago but 15 years ago today, um, my grandmother, Eunice Camo, or Eunice O'Donnell Camo, because my, my, um, my grandmother's maiden name, uh, was Eunice, was Eunice O'Donnell, but she was of Irish heritage, um, it's also where I get 50% of my Irish background, um, the O'Donnell family, uh, uh, she came into the O'Donnell family. I, uh, she was born. She died at the age of seventy. So, uh, she was born in. So I believe she was born in nineteen. Yeah, she died at seventy. So she was born in nineteen. Um, yeah, so seventy years. Yeah, so she was born in. And so she was born in the late 30s. Um, she was born in 35, I believe. Yeah, she was born in 35. Um, my other, my grandfather was born in. Um, actually, uh, yeah, my grandfather was born in the 30s as well. Um, so, uh, this is the, um, so, yeah, so it was not a shock. We knew it was going to happen, but when it did happen, it hit us hard big time on my dad's side. And on my mom's side, she was also missed because, um, she, uh, she got along, she, she got along with everybody in my family, uh, both sides, um, 
and everything like that. She 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 got along with my mother. Uh, she got along with my other grandmother, uh, Nana Dom. Um, Nana Dom. They actually there's actually a couple photos of them. Um, of them actually talking. <coughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I've, uh, sorry. It's not that I'm choking up because it was definitely. Yeah, there's a couple photos of them talking back and forth. Uh, I think I, I think one Christmas they did actually talk, and they did actually have a few conversations. Um, my grandmother was only married once. It was to my dad's father, Bill Camo. Unfortunately, they desor they desor uh, divorced back in 1985, um, and my dad's father is currently was currently Annie. Um, my but my grandmother had was a great lady. She had a great work ethic. Um, she was a great mother. She very strict. Uh, she was um, she was you are very. She was a um, I shouldn't say typical, but she was a, um, she was that perfect image of an, of a strict Irish mom, and, um, always making sure her kids were properly prepared for the world, and make sure they were disciplined, make sure they could make their lunches, and make sure that they kept the place, make sure that they kept their house clean from top to bottom, uh, something that, we unfortunately struggle to do, and I gotta clean this. I'm actually gonna clean this uh, this weekend in her honor, because I feel um, I feel like I do need to keep this place clean. So I'm gonna keep this. So I'm gonna so Nana, I'm gonna clean this um, room in your honor. I'm gonna make sure this is spin and spin. I'm gonna dust it like a mad dog um, and such like that. Um, and uh, I'm also going to do the learning differences i'm also going to release the learning differences video on on saturday so i don't know what i'll do tomorrow is i will clean this place up tomorrow night and um when i get back home from work uh i may start tonight a little bit uh actually i can't because i'm going to be going to bed soon uh but i may start eh, well who knows maybe i'll start tomorrow morning maybe i'll start tomorrow morning and then i'll ease in uh through the night um, my grandmother was very, very strict. She had a very good work ethic. Um, she held a few jobs in her time and she was, uh, very well liked by many people. Um, if you said her name, um, if you said her name in certain circles, she, they knew who it was. Um, she was a uh, big um, I mean, she taught my, she taught my dad and his siblings how to, you know, how to sew, dance, um, you know, how to keep the silverware clean, polished, and all stuff like that. She was, she was a great overall lady, and I won't, there's no way that I'll measure up, keeping the place clean, I, there's no way I'll measure up, I'm just gonna say that right now. I can try, I can practice. Um, but, you know, I, I have my own unique, but she was on another level when it came to neatness. Um, she always instilled it on her, uh, on her children. Uh, my dad is a neat freak with his paperwork and everything because of it. I'm starting to come around to that now that I'm getting older and stuff like that. Now that I learn the importance of keeping things organized, I'm getting better. I'm not perfect, unfortunately. So, but I will get there eventually. Um, she was also big into Frank's, Frank Sinatra. She was, she actually had a lot of albums. She had Dean Martin, but she was a big Frank Sinatra collector. And she used to, you know, she used to listen to a lot of music. And they, my mother, and my dad and his siblings used to dance to him during his, uh, at night, on Saturday nights when they didn't have anything to do. Because back then, you didn't really have, they didn't have video games or PlayStation or anything. So you, so you learned how to dance at night, uh, on the old, on the old gramophone, the old spin table with the 45 records, um, records, which my dad would love to recover, but unfortunately they're at my aunt's house. Um, 
And I'd love to do, get the turntable that my mother has upstairs so that we can play some of them and see if they still work. Um, but it's, um, it, it's, uh, but she's, she's up there. Um, uh, her, my fondest memories of her would be to, would be going to her house watching, uh, Scruffy Lady and the Tramp and, uh, those pinwheel cookies that she used to give us if we were good. We had, to, there was a prerequisite. We had to be good the whole day. We had to be good the whole day. And then we got a pinwheel cookie. If we weren't, then we sort of missed it. Once in a while, she would take us out. She would take us out for fast food. Um, no, she wasn't. She'd treat us to McDonald's or Burger King or Friendly's or something like that. Usually McDonald's. Even though it wasn't very good for us at a young age. Um, and it proved in one particular instant proved to be proved to be uh the fact uh, and i pretty much got um reprimanded for it even though i didn't know it even though i did not not know what was going on because i was young at the time i must have been two or th two or three at the time so i didn't know unfortunately uh i grew up in a different era with different standards for people and how to treat other people and just keep in mind i'm two when this is happening but uh i learned a very interesting lesson that day and i and i learned at the age of two that treating other people or certain groups of people is a, is important and it's probably the reason why i respect the certain group of people and why why i treat everybody with respect i sort of get the teaching the lesson thing from my dad grandmother and um my mom and everybody else but so i think one i think the moment that stands out um and don't judge i was two years old i didn't know so we went to mcdonald's one day and um i and we just finished up our meal i think we had a happy meal we just we ate, we had a small little burger she cut it she cut it up and she'd She'd feed us once in a while, and she'd be like, "Oh, hey, now you two can play." And this is Chuck and I. Miles did not. Miles. Miles wasn't in the picture yet. He wasn't in the picture until '93. This was probably. I was born in '89, so this is probably I don't know. Ninety-one, ninety-two. I'm thinking. I must have been three, actually. I was probably three years old. So I was three years old. Not thinking much of it. So we go in to the jungle gym and you know how you push your way through. And I don't have a problem. I don't I don't have a problem going through everybody. I let everybody pass. And usually the usually the little guy kids are usually the little the little usually when you're a little kid, usually the boys are playing a little rougher. You usually play a little rough, we push each other aside and we have fun. Um my brother Chuck's like, Oh, I'm going up this slide. So I decided to take another run. I decided to be adventurous. You guys know me. I like to be adventurous. I like to go. I like to go on a on an epic journey. You know, just just like my favorite, just like my favorite anime characters, uh, like uh, Yugi, uh, Goku, and uh, Jaden, and um, and everybody else. So I go up a so I go up a shoot and. There's this blonde girl, don't ask me how I remember, but it's just vague. I'm actually shutting my eyes right now. Black shoes, black dress, black and white dress, or it was a blue and white dress, I can't remember. It was a blue, it was a dark blue or dark, it was a darker color. It was, it was probably, it was probably, the the sun was, the, the little, the tubes were, this was during the day when it was sunny out but so they were lighting up so it was probably causing a it could have been a dark gray i never know it was it was a dark color it was a dark color dress with white with white frills blonde hair i know even back even back then at four years old even back then at three or four years old i actually remember who it was so me being so me being the young four-year-old kid i don't know who i i don't I know women exist. I know. I know my mother's. I know my. I. I know. I. I. 
I can't determine whether I'm basically, I basically like Goku. I basically can't determine who's a guy and who's a girl. Um, so I'm thinking, oh, she's just wearing a long dress or something like that and, and something like that. So little, little three-year-old me isn't very patient. And, <laughs> and the, the tubes, the size of trying to find something to compare it to. The tube's probably the size of that, probably the size of my car cases, maybe a little wider. Um, so, I'm here, she's here. I decided to go past, and I, of course, I don't know how to say excuse me. I don't know how to say excuse me, miss, or whatnot. And uh, my grandmother is always like, be polite, be polite. Be polite to everybody. Say um, say excuse. You know, she said excuse me to to people you meet and everything like that to your to your fellow to to everybody in there. Um, she actually did not say that. I, I actually learned the hard way. So what I did was being the rascal that I was. Don't judge. I'm only three. So I pushed past her and I and I just. Put my arm and shove her over, and she's like, "You're not supposed to do that." And I'm, she's bawling. I don't understand what's going on because, as I said, because I said, "Baby, little me, I'm three. I got the big glasses on. I got the big glasses on." So, picture me, baby, little me. I'm baby, little me. I'm just basically I'm three, four years old at this point. I'm three, four years old, basically. So, um. I'm like four, I'm four, yeah, as I said, I'm like four years old, so I don't really know what's going on here. So she's like, oh, you're not, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go tell my grandmother. So I go down the slide. She comes running out to her grandmother and says, oh, that boy pushed me aside. And my grandmother whisked me away and I, and I, and I actually pretty much deserved it because I, I didn't know what was happening. She's like, "Oh, we have to go." And she goes over to the she goes over to the grandmother. She says, "Oh, sorry, my my grandson doesn't know." I said, "Sorry, my grandson should know." Ba -ba -da -ba. And um, the car ride home was very silent, and I didn't say it. all. I remember is her saying. We're discussing this when we get home. No one talk. And my brother Chuck's looking at me. She's like, wow, you've done something now. <laughs> you've, you've done something now. So while we were... Um, so while we were getting cleaned up, I guess, because my dad was... Because my dad was getting home. And uh, that was the one day I knew it wasn't getting... That was the one day I knew I wasn't getting a pinwheel. Because I just said, well, I kind of, my lesson, my, my lesson was kind of, uh, well, I don't know if I, I don't know if I wanted to pin with that day because my head was spinning the whole time because I didn't know what the heck I was getting accused of. Um, and, uh, while we're cleaning up, while she's, um, while we're cleaning up and stuff like that, uh, she's, um, while we're cleaning up and she's uh she's doing whatever as i said we're four so so she's helping us out and everything like that so she's like so she's it yeah she's like she was like you mister can't be fresh you cannot you cannot hit or push aside little young girls you that is not what a little gentleman is supposed to be i i'm i'm surprised your father isn't taught hasn't taught you and i think it was just her and her and her ways you know i i said i said nana i won't ever do it again and some like i said nana i won't ever do it again something something on the lines like that and my brother chuck is like wow i and my brother chuck is like wow you got it didn't you buddy um and uh she's like oh and she goes You'll never, and she goes, oh, and she goes, oh, you'll never do that again. If I ever see you do that again, I won't, I won't, it'll be a while before I bring you two to McDonald's. And Chuck's like, nice, nice work, buddy. Nice work. Um, 
we went a couple of times after that. It took us a while to go back there because yeah, she didn't want to run into the grandmother again and everything. I think we did actually. Um, I think we actually did run into um, them again at some point, but this time I kind of I kind of let her by, and she was, and she goes, and I think my grandmother was like, "Make sure you let next time when she comes to you, you." You make sure when the girl comes to you, you let her by. You let you, you let her by, and I think um, I think every girl after that, I think I will let them by, because I didn't want because I didn't want to go home and ruin the day. So I I uh, I practically probably just which is which kind of serves the reason why I help out any girl I'm with, whether it's my mom. Um, a girlfriend or a friend that's dear to me, uh, you know, that's the reason why I'm, that's the reason why I'm a nice kind gentleman to Meg in April and any girl I run into, I'm very gentlemanly. I'm not argumentative. I don't try to boast or anything like that. Unless I'm trying to court you, unless I'm trying to court a girl, I'm, I'm obviously, well, even then I'm not going to boast, but I'm trying to court a girl, try to court her quarter a nice girl i'm trying to flirt with her obviously i'm gonna have a little bit of the dutch cards going on um and the uh the the camo uh the camo aggressive well not the camo aggressive but the camo finesse the smoothness um and uh that's and that's uh and and that's probably my my best memory of her everything like that um but yeah nana i uh i um uh, i miss not seeing you we we actually went out to eat with her a couple of times many many times my mother my dad would do it for her birthday and a couple of times because we wanted to see her and it was nice that my father did that my father was maybe one of maybe one of three people in the family that actually did that my my aunt Denise actually let her move in when she when she was having trouble later on in life, and bless my my bless my aunt's heart she she took she took her in and my father was like, um, my father would have loved that but she was like but he was like no I've I was like no mom I've I've got too much on my plate and you know, um I don't think it would have worked because me being Mister Learning Difference I. Would have had to pick style of a room, and I don't think that would have worked. Um, so he saved us that, but um, I'm obviously uniquely, or I, my room is uniquely organized, but I'm obviously going to clean it, Nana, in your honor, um, and stuff like that, because, you know, cleanliness is important. I could have everything stuck to the roof, but uh, I hope, um, but Nana, if you're up there, I played a little Frank Sinatra for you, and... I worked hard in your honor today because, and I played a lot and I did my best and I did well and I made sure to help every, and I think I helped every single lady I actually ran into today on some level. So, um, on some level. So I'm definitely happy about that. And I know you're happy and I know you're watching down on not only me, but my dad and every, my cousins and, um, my aunts and uncles, wherever they may be. Um, I pray to you. Um, I pray for your soul every day, but I pray for your soul. Um, and that's the reason why I pray for you, pray for us all every day, because I want to honor her memory because she's given me power to help out. I'm pretty sure she was there with me when I was helping out April and when I was trying to reason and do all that other stuff. So she definitely powered me along when I was struggling that and that work ethic that she gave made me pierce it through i have that I, I i probably have that tough i have that tough irish o'donnell blood in me um the o'donnells were a very tough and resilient group um and uh that's the reason why i strive to do better and better so and i think it's no i think it's no um i think it's no coincidence that april is was always on my case and she still is so 
Um, but I think that, you, you know, I think that reminds me of, um, she reminds me, well, her, her work ethic and her crazy and very meticulous attention to detail reminds me a lot of Nana Kamo. So I think it's no small, um, coincidence that she and I are friends just because, you know, um, so yeah, if I have to draw a parallel, Nana, yeah, her spirit, you know, her spirit does live on in another, so, and, uh, you live in with me, and, uh, you live on in all of our hearts, um, are you, I'm not gonna say my normal, but pray for all the souls out there that, that we've lost, either COVID, natural causes, or through the years, um, Bless the soul of my grandmother Eunice Kamo, who who passed 15 years. Um, Uni, as my my father would call you, Eunice Loretta O'Donnell Kamo. I pray for you every day, and I'm gonna keep on praying for you. And I also want to pray for the women in my life that you've taught me to protect and be a guard dog to. Um, Pray for them and all my friends that you've told me to protect and be good with. Thank you and have a good day, everybody. And uh, Nana, this one's for you. This one's for you, my friend. And maybe, maybe the one who, maybe the one who taught me a very, very, very interesting lesson. So.